What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny for real with a, a late upload. And the reason it's a late upload is because um, the news just broke, rumors just broke, and I like rumors. You're probably mad at me because over the last couple of days we haven't had a Kenny for real video, but I don't want to force myself to just talk about stuff for the sake of talking. I always want it to be something that I'm passionate about or something I think is interesting for a video. In the past couple of days, it's been like small rumors here and there. The NBA PA and the NBA have having conversations, but nothing like big. And I think that the rumor that just released three minutes ago could potentially be the biggest trade of the offseason. Y'all know this offseason is not going to be amazing. It might. I guess it might at the end of the day. But it's not going to be something incredible like the last offseason or even the offseason before that. So the rumor of Chris Paul's trade could be the biggest one of the offseason. I'm here to talk about that. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. And use the comment section. Everything I say in this video is, of course, my personal opinion. And you may disagree. And that is completely okay. There's nothing wrong with that. But use the comment section to have that discussion. Like I said, Chris Paul is my guy. This has been behind me for the past couple months. I am one of the biggest. No, 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 no. I am the biggest Chris Paul fan on the YouTube platform as far as creators go. So I feel like I'm in a good spot to talk about a potential Chris Paul trade. Now, the real question, we knew that Chris Paul was going to get traded this offseason after they got eliminated from the bubble the day after. The man posted a video on Twitter and Instagram basically saying everything is set for goodbye. Uh, OKC, thank you for this past year. I love these teammates. He had a farewell video when he was still in the contract, but of course he had had the conversation with the OKC front office that they were going to hit that hard reset on the team, which is cool. They surprised the world this year with the, was it, 1.4% chance of making the playoffs. And not only did they make the playoffs, they were they were a higher seed and they went seven games with the Rockets. They like they cannot have asked for a more, uh, more impactful season from Chris Paul and the rest of these guys. But apparently him... Gallinari, they both have posted things on social media basically saying that OKC is not the move. So we knew that Chris Paul was going to get traded. And if anything, he has raised his trade stock from last year being traded to now. The man, I'm always going to say this when talking about Chris Paul because it is important. The man went vegan, y'all. And he didn't suffer a single injury. Now, the season was, was shortened um, significantly. And there was a big six, seven month gap between games, but he still did not get injured this year. And that is that is the first time I can say that in the last couple of seasons with Chris Paul. So veganism has been great for him. And you know what? Instead of being a 34 year old point guard, he looked like he was 26 again. And the NBA loved it. I absolutely loved it. So we knew he was going to be traded. And the, the original new team, because uh, me and my guys talked about Chris Paul ex extensively on our podcast. It's through the wire. You can look that up on YouTube or Apple Music or Apple Podcasts. We talked about Chris Paul over the last couple of weeks and, like, where would he go? Because, again, we were confident, certain that he would get traded this offseason. The first match being heaven in my eyes would have been the Milwaukee Bucks. Milwaukee Bucks need a creator. They need a floor general. And they need a guy that can create his own shot and create for others. So it seemed like a good match. But last week we had saw a report that there's no traction on the conversation between um, OKC and Milwaukee and Milwaukee has their eyes on like Bogdan Bogdanovich they have their eyes on other NBA players so uh, Chris Paul's not that so then they got us thinking what are some other places and one of the places I had proposed was Phoenix and here we are here we are potentially going to see a Chris Paul Phoenix Suns trade now why would the Phoenix Suns do this Here's the explanation for it, um, and of course, I'm going to say the downsides to it as well. For the Phoenix Suns, we are talking about a team that just went 8-0 in the bubble. We have a player that they believe to be their their prime player in Devin Booker, um, their their star in the, of the future, first-time All-Star this year. And well, he has not been able to, or they have not been able to put together a team around him to get over 30 wins until this season. I think this was season number five for Devin Booker. So he's always been on a very losing team, and guess what? He got a little taste of winning winning when it came to that bubble. Ryan Rossillo has said on the Bill Simmons podcast last week that Devin Booker wants out. I don't believe that to be true right now, but if, if the Phoenix Suns came out next season, Devin Booker had a little taste of success and they came out uh, and fell flat on their face, I could see Devin Booker winning out then. So this could be their front office saying, hey D-Book, we're trying to get you all-star level talent. You haven't played with a point guard of this caliber. Again, Chris Paul was an all-star. He, he even got a few MVP votes. That's how good of a player he was this season. We want you to stay here, and we want to build a roster around you that can have us be playoff contenders. And at the end of the day, they they pull off this trade. Depending on what they give up, we'll talk about that a little bit later. This is a team that can make a playoff spot. You have to remember that this team was this close to making the playoffs. They had to go 8-0 in the bubble, but DeAndre Aiden missed 25 games this season because he was suspended. 
DeAndre Aiden stays on the floor. Shout out to Aaron Baines because he kept them relatively afloat. But obviously, we have to agree that DeAndre Aiden is significantly better than Aaron Baines at some things. Don't come at me, Baines fan club. I promise I, I, that's not slander. So if they have him for a couple, they win more games at the end of the day. They will win more games with DeAndre Aiden for those 25. So you throw Chris Paul into this lineup, but we have to talk about what they could be giving up. At the end of the day, that wing position right now, they have a lot. And I think that they would probably bank on basically the rotation that got them the success in the bubble, right? We're talking about Cam Johnson and Mikael Bridges being their wing players, which tells me that the odd man now is Kelly Oubre. Doesn't mean Kelly Oubre is a bad NBA player or anything, but he just might be the odd man out in this situation. So him, and I'm guessing Ricky Rubio, there's no reason to keep Rubio and Chris Paul on the same roster. And the real question is the 10th overall pick. This report has only been out for, at this point, 10 minutes, and I'm already seeing people in my messages asking about that pick. Is Chris Paul worth that pick? Is it 10th overall? Whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a high pick. It's a high pick in this year's draft. And maybe, yeah, it is 10th. Okay. I don't think so. And remember, Chris Paul is my boy, but I got to keep it a buck. I don't think the Suns would have to throw in that 10th overall pick to make this trade happen if they're giving up Ricky Rubio and they're giving up Kelly Oubre. And the reason I say that is, well, as good as Chris Paul has been in that one season that was shortened and that seventh month break in between, he is still an aging point guard with extreme history of injury. Now, again, he does have all-time high trade value between last year and this year, but I believe that they could be able to pull off this trade without the 10th overall pick being in it. Now, if I'm OKC, maybe I don't accept it unless the 10th overall pick is in it because you know Sam Presti want to stockpile those picks. But I do believe that there's a route to pull off this trade without giving up 10. There's a route to pull off this trade where the Suns have Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Mikel Bridges, Cam Johnson, DeAndre Ayton, and the 10th overall pick, whoever that may be coming off their bench, along with maybe is Dario a free agent? It doesn't really matter. I think that is a possibility. But if they did throw in the 10th overall pick, I also wouldn't be surprised. Again, OKC has Sam Preston. That, that guy's a bargainer. He's going to try to make it happen. Um, but if I'm OKC fans, should I be expecting the 10th overall pick? I would say no at the moment, but you never really know. You never really know. Obviously, um, Chris Paul's impact is deeper than basketball. It's also a culture change. And though, again, the Suns had a little lick of a success in the bubble, they still don't really have a culture at this moment. And maybe that culture may be the reason why the 10th overall pick is thrown in here. We have to remember that Chris Paul and Monty Williams played together for... I think it was only a season. I think it was only a season in 2009, 2010. Um, and they loved each other. They loved each other. You know, obviously both of them are older now. And both of them are wise now. And I'm sure it'll be a match made again. So I'm interested in what this trade would look like. OKC fans should be super happy to see this report because I think that the Suns have things that Suns fans or the Suns have things that OKC fans should look at and lick their lips. Kelly Oubre. Again, he's probably the, the odd man now. But let, let me do a quick Google on Kelly Oubre's age. That That's funny that I said licking lips and mentioned Kelly Oubre. I promise that wasn't intentional. Um, he's 24 years old. He'll be 25 um, he'll be 25 right before the beginning of this NBA season. That's still young enough to be there for your rebuild with Shea. It's still young enough to be with that rebuild with, uh, with, with Lou Dort and all of those guys, right? He could come in and just basically be that small forward that you need. Um, and then when it comes to Ricky Rubio, obviously Ricky Rubio is still a very good NBA player. If this team is not going to be another playoff team, I don't think, if they make this trade, but they would still be a competitive basketball team. It's not like they'd be bottoming out completely if they pull off a trade like this. They would still have foundational pieces to build on, and I think that's the only thing OKC fans should be looking for. They should be looking for players that can come in and help them now do whatever it may be, but also be able to grow for the future, right? Um, and you can do that. Maybe it ain't the 10th overall pick that you get in this, this trade, but maybe it's a future pick. You know, a future pick that's lottery protected or something. Something. If you can somehow walk out of a deal, think about think about this. Think about this from OKC's perspective. You brought in Chris Paul and got back a thousand first round picks, right? Because Chris Paul was looked at to be a bad contract, which at the end of the day he he was, and I, he might still be. You know, considering how old he is. If you're able to flip him for more picks, come on, bro. Sam Press is at the top of the game, bro at the top of the game. Um, so let me know what you think in the comment section. I think this is very interesting. I wonder what other teams will throw their their trade offers out there because there are some teams that could use 
Chris Paul's uh, Chris Paul's magic. You know what I'm saying? And Orlando might be one. Orlando might be one of them. I don't really know. Let me know what you think in the comment section. This is a big trade, maybe the biggest trade of the entire offseason. But who knows? The offseason is always super surprising. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. I'll be back. I can't say tomorrow because I ain't want to make that promises. But I do want to make some draft videos, and the draft is around the corner. So it might be tomorrow. It might not. Love y'all. Peace.